welcome once again to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello, hello. And Silver Quill. I think the chair I'm sitting on is alive. <laughs> Ooh. Let's not speak too, too, too loud. They might hear us. Did you know that's the new feature from IKEA? I wouldn't doubt it. In- <laughs> the massage chair that falls apart after three uses. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought that was made by Microsoft. <laughs> um, <laughs> an and today, that is an app for that. <laughs> no, that is Apple. <laughs> Wait, are you sure it's not made of aluminium? Because if it is, then it's made by Apple, then. If it was made out of Nintendium, then it will never break. <laughs> but, <laughs> but today, we are going to be reviewing the, the My Little Pony Micro issue number 7, focused around the Cutie Mark Crusaders, written by Ted Anderson, with art by Ben Bates. So, well, the story of this arc, or, well, the story of this micro, more like, it's that the Cutie Mark Crusaders are bored in their clubhouse one day, not knowing what to do. So, they decide to do some exploring, and while doing so, they end up falling into a cave where they find a gemstone. Now, after some scrutiny, scrutiny and uh, going for Best Pony to ask them what this gemstone is, they discover that it's not a gemstone at all, but... And a mimicker, a great equestrian mimicker, according to the comic, that is supposed to be a creature that can transform into anything else until it decides to stick with a form. Now, the CMC is seeing this, their kindred spirit, so hijinks and so. That's pretty much it. And if you want to know more, I recommend everyone to go check it out. So, guys, what did you think of this comic in, in particular? It's definitely a, it's a breath of fresh air after last week's. <laughs> Massive! Oh my god, so many storylines going into one. <laughs> well, let's just say that I feel much better for this one. Like, the previous comic review we did, that was intense. Intense. <laughs> yep. For this one, I am enjoying it. Uh, this one is one of those down-to-earth, you-don't-need-to-overthink-it kind of story. And it's really fun. One thing I do have to say is the art. The art style here is... Way different from the regular art style that we experience. And I'd agree. The first time I read this, I looked, I was like, wow, this looks a lot different. And in honesty, I think the artwork is perhaps the standout part of this uh, comic. It, it's funny, we, we, we talked so long last week about the, the Reflections comic because it was such a jam packed piece with so many things going on. It was hard to really deal with it almost sequentially. This one. It's a much simpler story, but in some ways I feel like the Crusaders all have unique personalities and they have a dynamic. But when you have a micro that's just about the Crusaders, in a way it kind of feels like the, uh, the individuals kind of get, can get lost a little. Case in point, when I look over the show, Sweetie Belle's often the voice of moderation for the group. She kind of gets the arguing Scootaloo and Apple Bloom to work with one another. Or to just stop with an argument. Whereas Apple Bloom's the more the driving force. And Scootaloo is... Well, uh, to be honest, she has probably the least defined role in the group. But she's also uh, a a source of enthusiasm. In this comic, there's sort of the group reaction, but not a lot of individual. Which is an odd dynamic. But I will also say that I, I love the idea of Imp. But I do scratch my head over a few things, but we, I'm sure we'll dive into that. I love the ingenuity of this comic. Uh, there is a lot of ingenuity on, on every single one of the uh, MLP issues, that is true. But there is always also that uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek, um, kind of like, haha, notch notch, we're making a reference to that. Mm-hmm. Haha, you get it, you get it. This is probably the first comic where there is not one clear-cut culture, uh, pop culture reference in it, that you can pretty much say that this is a 100% completely original uh, uh, kind of comic from the way that it treats the, the concept of imp to the way that it's drawn to the the, the, the way that is the artwork is so pretty, it's so beautiful, and it's so vibrant with so many colors, so bright, but at the same time it doesn't overload you, it's like looking at a it's like looking at a classic uh, story 
book for children where the illustration is done lineless, where there is a bit of sketch lines every here and there. Like, l looking at it, I could put this comic next to the works of Beatrix Potter and it wouldn't feel out of place because <laughs> it, it is vibrant, but at the same time, it's very close to home. It's It, it, it feels like... um. You can feel the joy of a child while looking at this comic. And it's perfect because it's about the Cutie Mark Crusaders. So, uh, visually speaking, the art goes very well with the tone that it's trying to set. It's a story about finding what you are and what you have to offer to the world. And it is good that at the end, there is no answer either. Like, pretty much what, what the CMCs have to deal with in the show, until Hasbro allows them to have a Cutie Mark, of course. But I do like how both art and and writing go hand in hand and how it doesn't feel overloaded. I also love the way that they drew uh, uh, the grown-up ponies in this one, like both Rarity and Twilight. They look great. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that you could remove that little line uh, that indicates the snout of a pony and make the character good-looking, but with Rarity they achieved it. Like in, a in the couple of shots that she's there, she, it looks like she just has nostrils. She doesn't have a snout. But no, it actually works really well thanks to the shading. So it is great. I didn't feel much for the CMCs because I'm going to be honest with you, they are like one of my least, uh, inter uh, the, one of the characters I have the least interest on. Mm -hmm. Perhaps because they are so far away from my, uh, from my age that I cannot build much of a connection with them. But this comic very much uh, achieves that, no problem. So, yeah, I really liked it. I, I, this is one of my favorites. No no problem, no doubt about it. I, I do like the story, what they're trying to do here. Like, uh, the Cutie Mark Crusaders discovered this quote-unquote gemstone, and it turns out to be a mimicker, and they befriend it. And from what Twilight explains to them, that the mimicker mimics or changed into everything except ponies and it copies until it finds the item that it wants to be for example if the mimicker wants to be a playstation 4 it will become a playstation 4 for the rest of its life yeah hey, why would you want a ps4 i don't know but yeah but it, it can stay at my place <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but for in this case or in this scenario um the kinema crusaders consider it as a new friend and as a new member of the kinema crusaders and sweetie bell even uh, made a cape for Imp. And the problem is, um, they don't know how to tie it around its neck. And, well, to solve that problem, it becomes the cape. Oh. <laughs> she turns into a cape, yeah. Yep. I, I do like this comic. It feels like them trying to help their new friend um, to find the item that it wants to be. Yeah, find really their cool. identity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, it is good that at the end, they are like... Uh, they get so bogged down trying to see if they find a, 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 an item to turn her into, uh, to turn Imp into that. Mm -hmm. uh, Imp just has a freak out and disappears. She's, she, like, I'm calling her a she. It's supposed to be a nit. It's mm -hmm. just because it, it's, a, it's a rock. It doesn't have a gender. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's not a rock. It's a creature that looks like rock, unfortunately. Well, it, it might, but no one had the courage to turn it over and look. <laughs> oh, oh, God, no, no, it's silver. <laughs> I will ruin be... everything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> supposed you. to be the voice of reason and, like, uh, it, it, moderation in here. You're not, don't get me, I... don't make me take out the leash. <laughs> I, ne I never, I never signed on for that. <laughs> oh, you. my contract. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, but... No, but, yeah, uh, I follow up from that. You broke. You broke but, it. But anywho, I broke James. <laughs> you did. Ah, Norman, take over. I can't. Yeah. I have to go to the cold shower. <laughs> oh, you. But anywho, um, after the Kinema Crusaders, um, fight over Imp and them wanting Imp to transform into well multiple things, Imp has a breakdown and runs away, which kinds of reflects real life. In the end, the Kima Crusaders apologize to Imp and them wanting to be a friend instead of hurting it, they bring her back to the place where she found Imp and Imp is back with its mother. So It yeah. is good to see that even though they don't have their talents, they are grown up enough to realize, hey, we are kind of like messing things up here. We shouldn't be doing this. And they go back and they fix the mistake. They could have done it sooner, but they're children. They were not supposed to even fix the mistake by themselves in the first place.
it is good to see that they can go back and backtrack and say, uh, 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 yeah, uh, no, 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 we should, no, we're yeah, doing it wrong, yeah. guys. We shouldn't although, be doing this. True. Although part of me wonders, you know, when, I, when I was first reading it, I, two questions came up. One, is are you really a good friend if you take someone back and stick them underground in a dank cave? No, but... It... Well, if that's the place where they live. True. Well, if, if, they, if they live there, I mean, uh, I just thought, wow, you... I can understand you don't want to overload her, but you're sticking her back underground, eh? And two, that is a very tolerant mother that she allowed three strangers to come in and pluck <laughs> off her kid and <laughs> not go after her. Yeah, I think she was very confident that her child was going to be uh, kicking all sorts, all sorts of pony plot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Silva, here in page 23, the line that I think Apple Bloom said is, Twilight, I think we should take him back home. So that is a very grown-up thing to do because Ip here in this reality may not be a person, in this case a pony. So it is a living creature and it could be like a animal per se. A rock, or a rock per se. It's a very stratified opinion. Yeah, yeah, true that. But... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Silver, god damn it! Regular <laughs> <laughs> sorts of things, but the... he just made a geology joke. Uh. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> That's because I rock. <laughs> oh, boo! Oh. Rock you like a hurricane? Uh. <laughs> Here I am. Uh. The other thing, there's also Twilight's explanation about uh, mimickers. Mm-hmm. And first off, the expression on Apple Bloom and Scootaloo in that panel. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty subtle callback to probably the darkest joke in this entire comic book series. Oh. Where, where Chrysalis has one of the fuzzy kittens. <gasps> oh, God. Uh, oh. And, and all you see is a splatter sound effect with mm-hmm. the girls screaming. It's like, wow, the Crusaders better be out, fresh out of therapy on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. But let's see here. it says here that mimickers and changelings are very different creatures. Changelings can turn to other ponies, but mimickers can turn to anything except ponies. Which is, well, okay, yeah, back to the classic uh, comics are not in continuity with the show, or are of a lower continuity. Mm-hmm. Now, like, I always kind of figured changelings could be more than just ponies, otherwise they are very specified. True that, but the thing with the changeling that we see from the show it is only implied that they can change into ponies we've never seen them well in show that is change into anything else other than a pony they have changed into pegasi unicorn and earth ponies so that mm-hmm. doesn't make them uh, uh that doesn't make them necessarily uh limited to other species who knows maybe we're gonna see a changeling turning into a donkey that will be fun or maybe a changeling turning into a zebra or a crystal pony. I'm not sure if they can turn into a griffon, though, because that's not an equine. So, and it doesn't have equine parts, and as we're talking about hippo- hippogriffs. Yeah, so I'm thinking, like, what this book or the book is trying to say in the encyclopedia, that is, that changeling can turn into other sentient beings, while mimickers can only change into other items that is not sentient. Chairs, table, bookmark. Dogs. Winona. Yeah. Well, actually, Winona. it's it's funny you mention Winona uh, mm-hmm. because, and this is weird. This is coming from a guy who's had who's had a legal education mm-hmm. here in the U.S. At least, uh, as much as we love our pets and as much as we consider them part of the family, mm-hmm. they are considered chattel or personal items. Uh... You, you cannot be put on trial for harming an animal as as you would harming a human. <laughs> Because we have, we are kind of forced to treat them as items. That is rather heartless, to be honest with you. In Spain, we don't have that. There is, uh, you can actually be put on trial and go to jail, and there are precedents of this. If you mistreat an animal or a pet or a farm animal or anything oh. that you, it doesn't matter oh, if you own it. You can end up with your butt in jail if you do that. Oh, there's still a cruelty to animals uh, law that does the same effect. There is a case law where a veterinarian did a very poor job caring for a dog, which in turn led to the dog's demise, I'm sad to say. Uh, oh, no. and, and the owner wanted to press charges against it. Now, this was not intentional cruelty against the animal, 
uh, but the, the judge said, I, we really can't, well, the ruling, rather, was that we can't press anything beyond trespass to chattel, uh, harming a personal item, hmm. and, and damaging, in a sense. So there is cruelty to animals here in the States as well. Uh, you hurt an animal, you are in for a world of pain yourself. Yeah. But it's... You should. It's fun. It's just strange that there's sort of a legal standing as, as animals as in items, which I thought on when I read this comment. So, my little pony ties into American case law. <laughs> wow, who see that coming? And you thought that this comic wouldn't go places. Wow. <laughs> I, this, these comics go places I never dreamed. Now, you mentioned that there were no uh, pop culture, but when they're having imp turn into clothing... And the third attempt is all mystery science theater. Ah, yes! <laughs> it's all mystery science theater uh, pieces. What a riff. It stinks. It's <laughs> referencing riff tracks. So there's at least one reference in there. I, is, say, yeah, I didn't mean to say that it doesn't have any. I mean to say that it's not as loaded uh, as the other issues. Uh, it's not like you can read any issue written by Katie Cook and drawn by Andy Price without stumbling upon 577 <laughs> uh, uh, pop culture references in every goddamn panel. Because oh. they, they do love the references and they know how to work them out and uh, how to uh, work them into the comics. Uh, but this one uh, doesn't have all that much. It, it would have the same amount of reference as a normal episode of the show, which is why I think this comic, out of all of the comics out there, this one will work really well as a, as an episode, as a standalone episode for the series. I will say that the Mystery Science Theater uh, reference is a trend I'm seeing more and more in the comics as we've in uh, the issues that have come out within the last year or so. Oh, really? Actually, has oh. it been? Actually, maybe not even a year. It's where the reference is starting to take more of a center stage. Uh, this is especially true with uh, Discord uh, comics. Oh. Pretty much any comic featuring Discord. With Cook and Price, they, they have, you're right, they have a ton of references. But they're always in the background. You have, it's almost like a scavenger hunt. Oh, where's Waldo or uh, where's Derby Hoos? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where can you spot the reference? This one, it's front and center. And I actually prefer Cook and Price's style of it's there to encourage a second read-through. Well, it's kind of the micro, and it's a playful banter to it. It doesn't really hurt it that much, and it doesn't really affect the whole comic that much. So it's really okay. Uh, it's just It was just an early indicator of what I've seen as a growing trend amongst the comics. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, believe me, when we do get to uh, certain issues where pop culture references are front and center, I'll be like, yeah, I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. Well, in the end, in the end, uh, this comic is pretty awesome in its art. It's done by the same person who did the Pinkie Pie micro. And in that micro, I said that the art style is really animated as... Like any, as like a Japanese manga would have, and this one I sense that too. Although when you talk, when you say that it's the same artist, I thought, wow, this is I, I didn't know, recognize. Right, <laughs> I know, right? Like uh, people who haven't read this and are listening to us talk about the comics, you, you guys should really go and take a look see at this one because this art style is way different from the mainline comics. In, Especially in issue 21, where it's the Trixie and the main four, whatever it is, goes to Manhattan just to look at a trick. You know that issue. We're going to review it soon enough. But anywho, the art style there is totally different. And I kind of like this one way better than that one, personal preference aside. Well, the consistency between uh, the Pinkie Pie Micro and this one is the eyes. The they both have such vivid eyes, and since Imp is mostly demonstrated as a pair of uh, blue eyes on an item, it, it's a perfect match. Now, about my, my comment that um, we don't really see the Crusaders as an individuals, did that really stand out to you guys, or...? Mm, well, you, you, need, you maybe need to elaborate more on that. What do you mean by that? Well, th- 
after four seasons, we've had at least a few episodes devoted to each Crusader individually. The others are present, but it's not really a Crusaders episode. Mm -hmm. So Apple Bloom has had an immense amount of attention. Sweetie oh, Belle yeah. had Sisterhood of Social and uh, For Whom the Sweetie Belle Toils. Mm -hmm. And Scootaloo has had Sleepless in Ponyville and Flake to the Finish. So we, we've we gotten to see them on their own, in a sense. And there's also Crusader episodes where you see their dynamic. I mentioned the Stairmaster. Sweetie Belle's the one who keeps the group on task and gets them to stop bickering. Apple Bloom's usually the idea pony, uh, coming up with ideas on how to indoctrinate Bab Seed into the sisterhood <laughs> or to go bowling for cutie marks. All right. Also, and let's not forget uh, Hearts and Hoofs Day. Oh, okay. well, the three of them are in on the whole gig of let's ship me, my big sis, my big brother with my teacher. Oh, God. Like, you know, from the, that, that lesson is do not ship ponies together. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, uh, and Scootaloo is the group's optimism. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She's the one who keeps an enthusiasm level high. And that aspect, at least that's what I've interpreted watching the episodes. This one, it felt like they all kind of had the same goals, the same desires. They were all reacting to the same situation in the same way. So while it's three characters, it's really sort of the group mentality. I think that's kind of the way it is because of what their, their, what their end goal is. Because right now, they're trying to help one of their newest member, which is Imp. And Imp's goal is, well, kind of simple yet complicated at the same time. Its goal is to mimic an item and stay that way for the rest of its life. So if you think about it, right, how do you help this kind of creature? Well, simple. You just show it an item and it takes that form for the rest of its life. So the Cutie World Crusaders, they get overly excited about said scenario and well since it's kind of an easy job they kind of went overboard with it them having their own way of handling things they say at the very end we were treating her as a toy and not a friend mm -hmm. but but again it's like they all have the same they all have the same reaction so you know i just, i enjoy the comic but i also say okay this was the humor crusaders as a group we don't really get to see them as individuals. Mm, true, true. But I, I think there's a micro for that. <laughs> Sorry, I think there's an app for that. No, I mean there's a friends forever for that. Is there? I well, the Discord one. Well, that, well, that was pop culture oh, references. Yeah. But uh, oh my god, that one. <laughs> that one. I, I, I wouldn't say that one. Like, that one. We're not going to no. touch that one today. No, 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 not today. We've we've had our fun, but uh, even there, I felt like it was more the group. And not really. We haven't yet had an, a comic that was just about Apple Bloom or Sweetie Belle or School. It's always the Crusaders. I am guessing soon enough. I'm guessing soon enough because, like I mentioned before, there's going to be probably going to be a micro with that because in issue twenty one, the Kinoa Crusaders are going to be involved with that one too, including Pep Seeds. So yeah, wait. What? No, my bad. Sorry, it's only about Apple Bloom. So I take that back. So Apple Bloom is going to take the spotlight. To take into, no, I think I know exactly what what uh, said. What is talking about here is that um, uh, will the Cutie Mark Crusaders be able to stand alone on their own when the other two are not around? Mm -hmm. And to that, I actually I have no answer to that because we haven't seen them uh, uh, separate for an entire episode. Even in the even in their own respective episodes during season f four, they were with the rest. Like uh, Scootaloo always had the, the CMCs on Flight to the Finish. Uh, Apple Bloom had the friend, the help of her friends in uh, some point to watch over me, and Sweetie Belle had needed the help of her friends during for whom the Sweetie Belle toils. Uh, the problem is that when you have three characters that have been established from the very beginning uh, to be together. Literally from the very beginning, because they were together in episode one. Uh, for a brief unknown reasons. <laughs> for unknown reasons, they were together there in the corner and cowered under, uh, under the uh, presence of Nightmare Moon. It, when you have established them together, it is difficult to separate them and take them apart. Imagine 
Imagine the Three Stooges on their own. I'm pretty sure that the Three Stooges on their own, they wouldn't be that funny unless you have very good writing for it. But when you think about the Three Stooges, you always think about them together. Something similar goes with the CMCs. It's very difficult to imagine them separated. And you need you need very good levels of writing to have that work out. But even here, even in, in a group dynamic, I didn't really see them as indi- as having individual roles or fitting. It was just sort of, oh, let's let's have him try to be uh, clothing. Let's try to have her be toys. Let's try to have her be music. Mm. Oh, so, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I completely agree with you. I'm just saying that for the future, it will be difficult yeah. to see them uh, uh, on their own. As uh, you know, as the show yeah. goes forward, because god damn it, it is difficult to write for a, not just for a character, but for a kid character. It's very difficult to write for children and not make them ob- obnoxious, unbearable, annoying, or just downright bad. True. Look at Disney. But so many times I... they had to they, they 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 needed so many attempts before they came up with Lilo from Lilo and Stitch, which, in my opinion, it is their absolute best uh, kid character. Obnoxious and terrifying. That can describe kids on a certain days. Oh, true that. <laughs> it is absolutely true because kids can be like that. Uh, th- well, they are not like that all the time, thank God. But it, oh, it no, very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I am remembering uh, Village of the Dam now. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, well, then. well, it is. Hall- <laughs> we are recording this around Halloween, so. This yeah, is probably this, this. But anywho, yeah. You are um, dating the video, Norman. Oh, shush. But anywho, anywho. Um, overall, overall, then. I mean, there's nothing much to say. It's a one issue comic. So, overall, then. <laughs> one issue comic, super simple. Let's see what we think of it mm-hmm. in like final thoughts. So, final thoughts, guys. Um, for me personally, I enjoy the comic. I, I do like the uh, lesson or the moral they try to tell in the story. And. I enjoyed it. The art is pretty good. And even though there's a few issues like what Silver says, it didn't hurt the comic for me. I find it entertaining. I would have him turn into a stapler. <laughs> oh, why? Into a stapler? Why? Why indeed? Oh. <laughs> Curiosity, would she refill her own staples? And then what happens when she staples? Do the staples... Are they not a part of her anymore? You're overthinking this, aren't you? I, I am having fun with this. There's no such thing in my book as overthinking. It's just having fun with it. Okay, that's valid. <laughs> but it's a fun, simple tale. Very straightforward. Uh, and with, But for me, the standout, the thing that is in my memory for the most part is the artwork and just the sheer beautiful, and not only the coloring, but also the angles of how these characters, it's very animated, very dynamic artwork. And you can always tell the energy level of the artist working on a comic when, you know, they're willing to show characters from high and low angles, whereas others, it's all very straightforward. And I like the idea of the mimickers. And I still question why the giant boulder mom didn't, didn't roll after her kid. But hey, to keep, <laughs> if you want to keep a light edge, stone edge, <laughs> no, I think that's how the mimickers travel around. They get picked up by uh, explorers thinking that it's a gemstone. And once they touch base on wherever they are, they transform into certain items and spread around. Like how pollen or insects travel around the world, I guess. <laughs> oh, no, I thought you said, for a moment I thought you said, Poland, and I'm like, what Polish people are like, mimickers? You! No! Bad, James, bad! Our apologies to Poland. Well, ask ask Scotland, that's pretty much how they work. Oh, God. If, you, if you'd like to declare war, please know that Norman is in Malaysia. Wait, I didn't do anything! It's James! Gosh! Whoa, 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 whoa. hey, oh, you're the one who has a Messed up accent. It's not my fault if you don't know how to pronunciate. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm causing an international incident. Although, now that, we men- <laughs> now that we mentioned the Boulder Mama one more time, I just I just realized Imp, that may not be Imp's natural form from the get-go, that she's just trying to be like Mom. Mm, probably. Probably. Uh, but you know, 
she could just be a geo dude. That'll be much better. <laughs> geo dude, geo, <laughs> geo dude. <Okay>. If you, <laughs> but still, but still. Final thoughts, guys. Maybe oh, I'd yeah. have them turn into a lamp. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. uh, <laughs> so she can shed some light onto where she comes from. Um, exactly. Brighten, brighten the mood. <laughs> uh, uh, someone's gonna get killed. Ain't I they? have. I will imp turn into a. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I have no idea. No. Don't idea. ask this question on Derpy Boru. You'll get answers that you'll never sleep again. Oh God, no! <laughs> but How can you fit so much in there? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anywho, James, do you like this comic then? I did, I did, I really liked it. I think it's uh, very creative, very imaginative, and like I said, I love how ingenious, uh, and I love its ingenuity, how innocent it can get to be. Uh, mm-hmm. It is like a kid's illustration, like a, like a kid's book, more than any other of the other comics, uh, because the art style, it's not, I don't want to use the word childish, because that's like a foul word. Uh, I want to use more like a, and not the word kid friendly either, because that's even a even more foul word. So I'm not sure what word I'm trying to use to describe um, the tone and atmosphere of this comic. But it definitely is some one that brings me back to when I was a kid. So kid apocalypse, <laughs> kid apocalypse. Haha. <laughs> No, I will come up with a word when the cameras aren't running and there is no uh, the recording is over. I guarantee you, it always happens with me. <laughs> Probably, probably. I just have bad timing. Yeah, but anywho, um, I said I like it. Silver said he like it. You, James said you like it. Wait, Silver, did you say something about the comic? Oh, yeah. I uh, I enjoy it. It's not my favorite of the micros because I I really love the character focused arcs. Which next one is Celestia? Oh yeah, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that one. That one. By the tone of our voices, you already know we're gonna like it. So I, 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 so this one, like I say, I see the Crusaders as a group, but not necessarily as individual characters mm-hmm. in this presentation. So that's why it's not my favorite, but it's by no, but I do enjoy the tale. True that, true that. So anywho, then James, what's next week's comic review going to be? Oh my gosh, hang on a minute, let me go get my wiki, uh, because I have literally no idea what's coming after. Uh, because we are going to review another one of the um uh, we're going back to the arcs right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so yeah definitely like norman said next week is going to be the manhattan mystery diamond disappearing finney starring trixie applejack best pony fluttershy apple bloom and babsit oh. and uh, it's written by ted anderson and uh drawn by agnes garbowska and colored Actually, oddly enough, by Lauren Perry. This is mm-hmm. one of the comics that was not colored by Heather Breckel. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. That is interesting. So that will be next week. I mm-hmm. hope you guys are ready for that one because I have so much to say about this comic mm-hmm. arc as well. One thing I have to mention about the comics now is that we're so close to catching up with the main story. Like, we're on issue 21 now. Isn't that the point of doing these reviews weekly, Norman? <laughs> Yeah, I know, but you know, it's just like catching up, and then soon we'll hit the friends forever, and then after we've done all that, we'll be up to date with the comics, and we have to wait for a month now, and then like we only have one comic review a month, and then like eh. not necessarily, no. Oh, come on! I think it will be a blessing because I will be like, oh, thank God, I don't have to review these goddamn comics every goddamn week. Oh. Or, or we can change gears and say, let's talk about the first page of the reflections arc. Next week is the second page. <laughs> Next week is the third page. Oh gosh, you, 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 you know, can do that. you, you can know. Do that. <laughs> oh my god! And when we reach to the second issue, we will have to go panel by panel. No, okay. <laughs> you, you know, you know what, guys? You know what, guys? I have a feeling if we do that, if we even do that, we are going to spend three hours just talking about the pages. <laughs> What's so bad about that, though? <laughs> We will learn so much about each other that we will not want to talk to each other for months. So you guys are awesome. Now get out of my internet. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, one thing I need to... Get out of my lawn, you pesky kids. You're stepping on my Tumblr dashboard. Oh, my. Which is new, by the way. Yeah. 
Mm. Oh, one thing I need to mention. One thing I need to mention. By the time we reach the second annual or the 2014 annual, we are going to have an interesting talk about that one, and we are going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> but anywho, uh, James takes out. Okay, well, this has been this week's MLP Comic Reviews on the MBS Show. I have been James Cork. And I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been traumatizing the both of them. <laughs> you no. Not the puns, not the puns, not the puns, not the puns, not the puns. Oh my I'm god, not... the puns, they're in my eyes! <laughs> I was such a little kid when this happened. I had no idea what I... <laughs> Where is my teddy bear? Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> and this is why reviewing comics is a man's job. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You don't send boys to review a children's comic book. Bye-bye, <laughs> uh, guys. Got under the pressure. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>